Kodak Retina Reflex S. Camera here from Germany to be serviced. Having a quick look over this one to see what I can see from the outside. The plastic meter window here is quite badly fractured and it's an odd shape. That plastic's pushed up in the centre. Certainly that's not a healthy look. Looking at the top here, I'd say that's been dropped on its head. I think that's the reason that that's so damaged. Can we tell anything else? Well, there's a lot of corrosion visible here. See this crusty stuff around here? Looks like corrosion to me. Might not be, might be dried something else. But it's not a good look. Let's hope it's not corrosion. We've got a bit of it around all these surfaces here. Anything else? Not much. A couple of ice bumps on the back. Base of the camera looks tidy enough. Back catch seems to move. Some discoloration around here, but then you get a lot of finger marks around here because that's your meter setting wheel. The, the meter, the meter's lively, it appears to work. In the back of the camera, no repair stickers. Looks quite clean and tidy. At the front, okay, let's see how this thing goes. I swing the film advance and you probably heard that mirror dropping, just failing to, failing to latch. Let's see what happens. Okay, that time it cocked. It wouldn't cock correctly with the lens fitted. That's an indication that the shutter needs to be serviced. And it may mean that it may have cocked had the adjustment been absolutely correct. Let's see if the shutter will go. This is on one second. That's pretty sluggish. You see the way that took a while to close the shutter blades? You shouldn't get a delay like that. It should be much more instantaneous. So the, the shutter certainly needs to be serviced. There's no doubt about that. Is the meter cord coupled? Yes, you can see as I move the wheel at the bottom, the top moves nicely. And we'll just try this. The shutter speed settings ring here, that moves quite nicely. That's fairly free moving. That's, that's, that's good. So, I don't know what state the prism's in. I can't get this to cock with the lens present. Let's see if we can get it to accept the lens in the cocked state. I want to be able to view through the finder. It's a, a little bit dull, but it generally it appears quite good. There are no obvious patches of silver loss. There's a patch of something. Um, fungus or something of that nature right in the middle of the screen on the prism and uh, hopefully that'll clean away but it looks like a good candidate for servicing so I'll get into it so how do you get into these cameras well start by taking the rewind knob off just put something through the fork of the rewind and unscrew the knob with your fingers. This comes off as a single unit, that collar comes off with it. We have two screws at the rewind end of the top cover. That one is not coming loose. Let's try a different screwdriver. We have one screw here at the end of the top housing. That strap lug may be slightly bent. That would be more damage from the camera having been dropped. Okay, that leaves us with this. That 
pinhead screw there. You need a screwdriver made to do that, like this one. All it is is a standard screwdriver with the pieces you don't want ground away, leaving the pieces that you do want. Works much better than a pair of tweezers for doing something like that. So that screws off, no damage. Now the top cover should lift off. Let's give that a wriggle. Lift it off. So in the top cover, what have we got to deal with here? Well, I can tell you that this piece here, this top where the meter sits, I can tell by the munch marks in there that that's been put back before, either replaced, the original's been replaced, or another one's been put in there of place in place of it, just by the munch marks. That's crimped in at the factory. They had a special tool for doing it. No one's got that. Apart from that, top cover looks okay. There's this rubbishy white stuff all over it. I'm not sure what that is. A camera top here. What have we got? We've got their meter button. And we have the return spring for the meter. Now interestingly that looks a bit rusty. Which suggests that uh, moisture's been in here. There's no other reason for that to look rusty. I want the prism assembly out of here now so I'm just going to cock the shutter slightly to bring this back out of the way. I've got three screws hold the prism assembly down. And this prism I might, oh, I'm probably going to have to strip it down. I would rather not if I didn't have to because the possibility of the silver, of silver loss on the prism is fairly high and I don't have any good replacement prisms. In fact the last batch of replacement prisms I ordered from Germany seemed to get lost in transit. I've never seen them. And it's too late in the stage now for me to be looking to be buying more parts. Okay so I'll wrap that prism assembly up very carefully and put it to one side. That's that delicate piece out of the way. The shutter release button can come off. The meter, I can tell that this has had some damage. This plate on the top is not dead flat. Um, getting it to catch the light from the window, I can tell that it's, it's had some damage to it. It's been pressed on or straightened out. Uh, it doesn't stop it working, it's just, just a sign that things have happened. Because I'm taking the camera completely apart, there's no reason I shouldn't remove the meter and disconnect that cord from it. So I'll do that. That cord doesn't look to be in particularly good order. It's a bit frayed looking, but, and here's where the cord is tied into that notch in the drum. So I'll just unhook it from there. See, so there's the meter. I can put that to one side. And now I can remove this. This is our film release button. The springs, I put the springs away separately. I don't want them going through the cleaning process because most of these components I'll put through the ultrasonic cleaner. I'll remove the two screws that hold the strap lug in place. I'll take the rewind off, two screws hold that in place. Will this come apart for us? Yes it will. This is a single piece, unlike Retina 3C cameras and like this is a single piece. You can't pull the rewind knob up in order to wind the film back. You can only wind the film back with the rewind knob down in the normal position. 
Let's take this off, the strap lug at this end. You can tell this has been serviced before, that's not the original lacquer, that's new or newer. Just checking that's the correct screw. There's a special shouldered screw that goes there and that's the right one. And that supports that bush. That bush is there to keep the rack in firm contact with the gear on the top of the film advance. And although I'm not entirely sure, it looks to me like the gear on the top of the film advance is a later production one because it looks like uh, it's dark, a dark grey steel and the earlier ones would have been nickel plated. We'll lift that rack out. That grease is very nasty looking. That I'd say is a later rack too because that's a dark grey finish. That was certainly not used in the earlier Retina 3 Reflex 3 ca uh, S cameras. Sorry. That's a style, that finish, on it's common on the Reflex 3s. And only the later ones for that. So perhaps this was a spare part made at some later stage. It may even have been something that they experimented with and then went back to using nickel plated screws. Only to change later when they were doing the Reflex 3s further down the track. So we can lift that chrome trim off the top. I'll use some acetone to soften that lacquer and unscrew that screw. And I've got another screwdriver here to deal with that and just as before it's just the normal screwdriver with the pieces I didn't want ground out of the way to leave the pieces I did. That'll come off. The gear. Washer. Now this is much the same as you'd find on a Reflex, uh, a Retina 3X, 3C or anything of that vintage. It all looks much the same. Two screws here. Just remove the spring from the top of that screw. That's for the little ball here that stops the film advanced gear from backing up. There's a plain screw on this side. The shutter release can come out. Now that's very dirty looking. I can't tell whether that's corrosion or not I'm seeing on the top there. And the spring is sort of stuck to it with the nasty gooey grease. Okay, I can take the return spring here off the release lever. It's the top of the release lever shaft. And the circlet off here, this is the lock lever that locks the film advance when it reaches frame number one. That's the top of the camera. Let's take the lens off. We don't need that on there. I better start work on the base of the camera. Start with the tripod socket surround and the back catch release cover and 
those bits don't go through the ultrasonic cleaner because you'd end up losing the paint out of the direction arrow. Let's see if we can get this leatherette patch off. That is not coming off with that scalpel blade, mind you, the end, end is chipped off that. Let's see if my other scalpel's got a better blade on it. Here we go, and I can tell by the colour of that glue and the general state of it that that's been off once or twice before in its life. It doesn't really want to come loose, so I'll put a drop of acetone on there to soften that adhesive. Don't go mad splashing acetone around on a camera like this because if it gets on the leatherettes it certainly won't do the leatherettes any good however it certainly loosened up those screws Yeah, that's right down in there, I think. That glue. And take that off. So the leatherette from the base of the camera. Well, this could be well stuck or it could be loose. You can only find out by having a poke at it, typically. Well, it's pretty well stuck. I'm going to try a drop of naphtha there to see if that will help me get under that. Um, if the adhesive is will soften with naphtha, that's the best thing to use because you don't want to fight with adhesive if you don't have to. All right, let's try a bit of naphtha under here, see if it will make any difference at all. Don't go mad putting naphtha in here, you don't want it running down onto the mirror inside there or anything. Well, that certainly softens that up. I'll just put a bit on my scalpel blade. It'll make it easy, slide through easier. Yeah, that's helping. There's some of that, you can hear it cracking away, so basically the adhesive is just letting go from the metal. The rest of it, I can feel it, it's peeling away. So the Naphtha in that case is softening the adhesive and it's allowing the, adhe the leatherettes to peel off. This feels quite stiff, the leatherette. Looking at it, it's got quite a bit of old adhesive on the back. So it's been glued down once or twice and the um, build up of adhesive is, makes the leatherettes quite stiff see if I can scrape a lot of that stuff off. That's it, that's the leather off. 
you can see the state of that adhesive on there, it's quite a thick layer of goo. You can see by the different colours that there's you know a couple of different layers of adhesive on there. So it's it's been round the traps a bit this way. Get the screws out from the bottom trim. Some of these can be quite tight. Often if the use of adhesive has been a bit excessive, the adhesive will have run down around the screws and stops them from coming loose very easily. It doesn't often get down into the thread, normally it's just around the head of the screw. That one there, yep. We'll take that off. Now, there's a spring here that you need to be aware of. A small coil spring here. Now that works the capping plate. That latches the capping plate in place, and uh, that you need to be careful that that's doesn't get lost. We'll take out the release lever and I'll recover the spring from the release lever because it's likely to get damaged in the cleaning process otherwise. If it will come off for me. Yep. This is the lock lever. The tripod socket. Now, often the screws are loose on the tripod socket. Not today, by the looks of it. Well, we can leave that there since they're not loose. There's no need to fight with them. Okay, the rewind button I want off. And here I have a pair of suitably mutilated pliers that will grab that rewind knob for me. That's very tight on the thread. Corrosion is usually the main reason for things like that. I'm just having a look at this. No, it doesn't look particularly bad. There's a screw here that drives the sprocket from the sprocket shaft. We'll take that screw out. That screw is, it's got something on it. Oh, here's a film chip. We've just had a camera crippled by film chips. Let's take out the shaft. Take out the sprocket. that out the way I can lift out the guide bush from the top of the film advance, take out the clutch and separate the clutch. And back at the bottom of the camera again, unhook the spring from the rewind button catch. Remove the screw. Remove the rewind button catch lever. There are three screws hold this bush in place. For the film advance, I'm just trying to find the screws.
it's certainly not loose. These screws are not uncommonly loose. But whoever did those up last time didn't mean for them to come loose. Now this is stuck. This whole piece here appears to be stuck. I've checked that those three screws are loose. Excuse me while I hold this to the light. Now they're all loose, but this is stuck in here. The whole bush is stuck in there, presumably with dried grease. Oh. You can see I had to pull that out of there. This is all just dried grease. It's absolutely clogged with it. How that film advance lever moved at all is just a wonder. The spring doesn't want to compress. It's just too clogged up with hard grease. That's a real mess. So I'll put that and the three screws and go in for the cleaning and take out the take up spool. This is sticky with grease and there's another film chip. That metal bush can go through the cleaning. This I'll clean manually. What have we got in here? Oh look, there's a whole nest of film chips down there. They're breeding in the corners. Like cockroaches. Okay. Now, the delicate bit. Getting the leatherette off the front of the camera. 